basic inequalities. So eventually, eventually we're going to solve inequalities, linear inequalities. But before we do that, we're going to warm up a little bit with just the concept of inequality. Okay. So what we're dealing with here is we just want to know which number is bigger. That's it. Which number is bigger and how do we represent that mathematically with symbols? Okay. So for the first one, the directions here are to fill in the blank with the greater than symbol or the less than symbol, right? This guy is read less than, this guy is read greater than, okay? So five is what to four? Greater than. And if you get that mixed up, you notice that the big end, the open end, goes with the bigger number. The little end, the pointy end, goes with the smaller number, okay? Negative two and one. Negative two has to be less than one, right? So it gets the smaller end, the one's bigger. All positive numbers are always gonna be greater than negative numbers, so negative less than the positive, okay? So number three is our first one that could be a little tricky, negative seven and negative one. Well, I have a number line here, so on your number line, there's zero, okay? And as you go to the right, if you go this way, the numbers get bigger, right? So the further you are to the right, the bigger the number is. So if you're dealing with two numbers, like negative seven, which is right here, and comparing it to negative 1, negative 1 is bigger, right? Because it's further to the right. So that means negative 7 is less than negative 1. Okay, the bigger number gets the bigger end. Okay, moving on. Question number 4. This is a product. So now we have to do a little bit of math. Negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And then we're comparing those. So that was just one extra step. And of course, 6 has to be greater than negative 15. Okay. So a couple more problems here. This is what we're going to be dealing with eventually. Okay. So we're going to have to just take a look at this. It's pretty soon we're going to be solving those. Okay. But first, we're still warming up. We want to know is 4 a solution? The idea here is solutions to inequalities can be more than one number, okay? Um, it's really a set of numbers. But first, let's answer this question. I'll try and explain that a little bit better. Is 4 a solution? So we're going to go ahead and plug in the 4 in for x, all right? So we plug in 4, and we ask ourselves, is that true? Is 4 minus 6 greater than 1? Well, 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Is that greater than 1? The answer is no. Okay, so 4 isn't a solution. So think about what could be a solution. Well, for example, 10 would be a solution here, right? If I plug in 10, 10 minus 6 is 4, which is greater than 1. 10 would be a solution. 11 would be a solution. 12 would be a solution, right? So there's a whole set of numbers that are solutions. Okay, so we're going to come back to that concept when we solve these. Uh, but let's take a look at this inequality. We want to know is negative 3 a solution. So I'm going to plug that in everywhere I see an x. 2 times negative 3 plus 7. Is that less than? Maybe I'll put a little question mark because I'm not sure. Is that less than? Plug in negative 3 for that x as well. Plug in negative 3 everywhere you see an x. Okay. And I'm asking myself, is that true? So now I'm just going to simplify what's on the left and simplify what's on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and say 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, right? That's negative 6. Add 7 to that. And I get positive 1. I'm still wondering what's happening here, so I'll add that question mark because I have to answer yes or no here in a minute. Negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. And then I ask myself, is 1 less than 2? And the answer is yes. 